Okay, just a little study in the Bible about closed doors. Don't know if it's ever been done before. And the first place we find Genesis chapter 7. And we're looking at the Ark of Noah. And like I said, I don't know where this is going, but if we look at chapter 6, verse 15, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it, the ark. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height 30 cubits. A window thou shalt make to the ark, and a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark, there's a, there's a door, shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower second third story shalt thou make it. Now it's interesting that the, the door in the ark has no measurement. And then when we take up what we're looking at in Genesis 7, 16, the storm's going to start and it is starting now. God has commanded that the animals get in that ark, and they are, two by two, by twos and by sevens. No one and his family have gone into that ark. Now watch, remarkable here. And we don't find the word door, but, and they that went in, the animals and the people, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, Noah. And the Lord shut him in. Not Noah or his family shut that door. Not a elephant or a cow shut that door. And we can assume that there was a little time for people to get in that ark as the, as the weather started. The family and the animals are nestled inside that ark. And when it comes time, God shuts that door. And that must have been a, a, a thing for Noah and his family to see. Because there's the, there's the sunlight, it's getting dark, and you can see trees, and then BAM! And not only is it closed, but it's also sealed. That door can't leak. Now that ark is not made to go anywhere, it's made to float, and it's made to make sure there's no leaks. So God shut them in that ark and sealed that ark by the door, with no measure. Anybody could go through that door. Noah preached to the people and only his family. So there we have a shutting of the door. Genesis 19. God protected Noah and his family as God protects us. From the wrath of God that, that goes on outside, we are protected on the inside by Jesus Christ who is the door. Genesis 19 verse 6. And Lot went out of the door unto them, and shut the door after him. So, he's got the angels inside. The men of Sodom come out, and, you know, we want to know them sexually. He steps out on the porch or the stairs, wherever he has in the front of his house by this door. He walks out and closes the door behind him and deals with the people. He's protecting the angels. Well, he, he doesn't know they're angels. He's protecting the men that came under his roof. In verse 10, but the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. All right, it's getting very angry outside. It's getting hostility outside. And the angels grab Lot, pull him back in the, in the house and shut that door for safety. So we see Noah and his family and anybody and those animals who... who are on the ark, anybody who got in that ark, God has shut them in for safety and protection. We see a man step out of his house to talk to some people to protect the occupants that are in his house. And we see the angels pull Lot in the house and shut that door for protection. It's a little interesting theme that keeps going on through this study. Leviticus 14. Leviticus 14, verse 38. Now, this is an important chapter with 13. 13 and 14 are dealing with leprosy. 
And when we're looking at chapter 14, there's a possibility that your house has been infected with leprosy. And verse 38, the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. The house is under quarantine. It's not really no, we're going to look at it, we're going to study, we're going to look at the lab results, but we're going to put the house to a test for leprosy. The door is shut, no one is allowed inside that house to protect everybody outside of that house from a disease. So we have seen three cases where people have gotten in and shut that door for protection. We see now, all right, the door is shut, but you can't get in for protection. Because there's leprosy. And we don't want you to get leprosy. Judges 3.23. Judges 3.23. And Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. Okay. Ehud had just killed Eglon, the king of Moab. He says, I got a little errand for you. They come in the, in the parlor. And he shuts the doors and he, he's got that dagger and just thrusts right through him. And the dagger doesn't come out. And the guy's laying there dead. So Ehu locks the doors, runs out the window, and what he's doing, he's giving himself protection. He's buying himself time. And while these people are standing outside the door, hum, 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 what was going on in there? I, 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 I hope he's okay. And there's something weird. And by the time they go find the keys and open up the door, their, their man is dead on the ground. And the one that has done death the judge of Israel, who God said to go do, he's had a good time to go off. He's been protected. So here's locking the doors again, protection. And again, he's inside the room. He locks the door so people can't come in to buy him time. Lock doors. Second Kings 4-5, 4, 4-4. Four, four. Second Kings 4-4. Four, four. When thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy son, and thou shalt pour out unto all those vessels, and shalt set, set aside that which is full. So she went forth from him and shut the doors upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Now this is the miracle of the widow's oil. Go borrow every pot that you can. Pan cup anything that will hold oil go borrow not a few and you take you and those sons of yours and those pots and those pans and those buckets whatever you can find you get in there you close that door and you don't let anybody see the miracle of god and not even the, the son of elijah he doesn't even see what happens he gets the report afterwards hey you know what i do with all this oil you go sell it and pay off your debt and live on the rest and there are some times that we're going to be in with God and maybe our family. We're going to be behind closed doors that people are not going to see. And he's going to work miracles in our life. And it's up to us when we step out to tell the testimony of what the Lord has done for us. So the closed doors here may be God working with us that no one else can witness, no one else can do. But you and God, and maybe you and your family. And he went out and went out and told others. Twenty-one thirty-three. Second Kings four twenty-one. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him and went out. Her son just died. She carries that that limp dead body into the prophet's bedroom that she made and she provided lays the dead child upon the bed elijah's bed and then shuts the door not like that body is going to get up yet <laughs> i say yeah you know let it be at peace let no one know 
I got an errand to do. I got to go run to God. I got to go run to the man of God. And she shuts that door. And in verse 33, he went in there of Elijah and shut the door upon them, twain, the child and him, and prayed unto the Lord. And then 34, 35, 36, you see a resurrection. Again, like the widow in her oil, the door is closed. It's between Elijah and that dead son. Not even the mother's there. And there may be times again in our life, God is going to work behind closed doors. Many people, they want a public show. They want, oh, let everybody see. I want to see fire and flames come down from heaven before everybody. That may not be the case. You may be in a room with the doors closed. 2 Kings 6.32 You get in God's protection. You get in where God will work with you and no others. Sometimes don't go in because there's a disease. 632. Elijah sat in his house, and the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him. But er, 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 the messenger came to him. He said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer has sent to take away my head. Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door. The sound of the master's feet are behind him. The king wants Elijah dead. The messenger comes to Elijah and says, hey. Elijah says, shut that door. Shut that door. Again, it's in the Bible, protection. Protection. Sometimes in our life when we got turmoils and distress, we'll see. Get behind a closed door with God and shut it. The Bible says, pray in your prayer closet. Sometimes get behind that closed door in that room where you are, just pray. Talk to God. Seek God. Calm down. Rest. Maybe take, maybe lay down like that, that dead boy. Just lay down and rest. Yeah, you know, that, that boy had the greatest rest he ever had. He was dead. I'm dead to trespasses and sins. I have been resurrected. Get behind the door for protection. Second Chronicles 28. Second Chronicles 28. Second Chronicles 28. Verse 24. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. What we got here. The temple for Israel was the worship house. It is where God met with the children of Israel. That is not the church house today. But for the nation of Israel in their land, that, that temple was where God met with them. That's where they were to go three times a year. That's where they were to go to serve the Lord. That's where they were to bring their sin offerings, their thank offerings, their peace offerings. And the king came in and shut it all up. And there may be times when the government comes, and will shut you down. And the government has shut down places of buildings that Christians have met. There are times that just because of not enough Christians, the doors of a church house have been shut. You can't pay the bills no more. But here's because he hates God. He's against God. He wants to do everything against God. And the world wants everything to do to shut you up, to shut you down. It's a biblical fact. This is not a place of protection. This is a place of, you know, you don't have a protection. And too many people lift up their church house as it were New Jerusalem itself. And you may have to realize you are the church where two or three are gathered together. There I am in the midst of them. You may have to find another place of occupancy. It may not be where you are now. It may close one day. And there's a lot of people out there, you know, if their church house died, if their pastor died, they're going to die too. 
that all that would be. For Israel here, closing that temple up meant closing off God. No sacrifices, no priests, no Levites. That's a terrible thing. Second Chronicles 29, 7. They have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned the incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. And that just follows chapter 28. With the temple in Israel, the central focal point of the worship of Jehovah God, when they shut those doors, that was it. There was no going in there, changing the bread. There was no in there, flipping the, the, uh, the candlestick wicks. No going in there, offering the incense. No going to the, the holy place at the Day of Atonement. There was no sacrifices. It's closed. As a Christian, if they close our church house, if the government comes and tears our church house down, we ought to still be able to go worship in our hearts and with, with the brethren, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We meet on a Wednesday at a gazebo in the city park. We met at another gazebo in another town, which became inadvisable. We went, went somewhere else. I've met, you know, in a living room. And I've known people, oh, the living room religion, the living room church. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with it. You got a problem with it. We're two or three together. together. You are there with the Bible and serving God and God is blessing it. Outside could be our church building. And we got to realize that as we get closer and closer, they may shut our buildings down. We may have to go meet out in the fields. You know, the rapture happened right now, and it's going to happen, I don't know when. You realize there's a possibility that every Baptist church is going to be a tool for Satan. All your wonderful churches, all your magnificent churches will be turned over to Satan, to Antichrist. And he'll use, probably use them for his honor and glory. Ooh, I bet you I put a damper in that one. Nehemiah 6.10. Nehemiah 6.10. Afterwards, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mechabiel, who, who was shut up. He said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut up the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay us. Yea, in the night will they come to slay us. Now, they're trying to entrap Nehemiah. They're trying to set snares for him. And they're like, let's go meet in the house of the Lord. We'll close it. We'll close the door. We'll have a closed door meeting. To his harm. To his harm. Now I don't know if Joseph and Potiphar's house, when he was there that afternoon, with any doors closed, but there was no one there. And that set up the means for Potiphar's wife to make her sexual advances, and Joseph had no witnesses. And when we go door knocking or we have a public ministry, Jesus sent his disciples out by two. You should never go in singular. Because if you get into a place or someone's house, you get in there, you're alone, the door is closed. You have now opened yourself to no witnesses where the enemy can now destroy you. Though you be innocent like Joseph was innocent. And... Don't think every invitation you're going to get will be for your welfare or for the benefit of God. It may be the enemy trying to shut you down, believe it or not. And there, okay, we were just talking about church buildings, buildings. There are some church buildings that you will walk in those front doors, they close those front doors, and you'll sit down in their seating pews, whatever they call them, and it will be to the devil's good and not to your good. For Corinthians tells us that Satan has his ministers. And you are sitting in a congregation of people who are of Satan in the world. To your heart. Not all closed doors are for protection. This protection here, Nehemiah, would not have been protection. It would have been a lie. It would have been to Nehemiah's arm and not good. Nehemiah 7 3. And I said unto them, let not the gates of Jerusalem be open as the sun is be hot. 
while they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them, and appoint watches and inhabitants of Jerusalem, everyone in his watch, everyone to be over against his house. Now the Jews, the Jewish people in the land of Israel had a time called the Sabbath. When God said on the Sabbath, there is to be absolutely no working at all. And Nehemiah sees that they're doing works. He said, I want them gates shut. I want the vendors out. We are going to fulfill the Sabbath that God wants to honor us. He said, well, where can we get the application for our lives in this? You know, we ought to have one day as such I grew up where everybody rests. I remember growing up as a young child that I can't, I want to say six o'clock, places closed. There was no 24 hour business. You couldn't go out, get a cup of coffee or a tank full of gas in the middle of the night. I'm remarkable. I think there was only one place that was open 24 hours where I grew up. It was a, it was a, a drugstore by the hospital. And that may have not always been like that. And we have up north, the New England used to be called the, the Blue Laws. And part of the Blue Laws was there was no occupation to be done on Sundays. Now, we're not under the Sabbath, but we should still have a rest. There was a time that Sundays were given to time in church and fellowship with the family. That's gone. The family and the church are wrecked. I'm not saying honor the Sabbath. But you got people today who can't go to church because the grocery store wants to make money. You can't, people who can't serve the Lord on Sunday night because the lumber company wants to sell garbage. You can't have a midweek service because the parts department want, needs people to work. You got un Christians, you got people of the world out there buying things which should be the Lord's day, and the places are open, the doors should be closed. And we're coming to the time in the millennium when Jesus comes back. I guarantee there'll be nothing open on, on the Sabbath. Now, there'll be no Sabbath in New Jerusalem. There is no Sabbath for the church. But we ought to have a day of rest. But you can't get that today because the church is going 24-7. And the people that are 24-7 are getting drained. They're getting tired. They're getting need medication to keep them going that's not healthy now we don't have we don't honor the sabbath but god says the body needs rest you can break down from overworking for being a workaholic more than being lazy so job 310 America had one time when the doors were closed for business. Job 3.10 Because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from my eyes. Job is cursing his birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Job and Jeremiah say, shut up. I wish I was never born. Plus, we only have one birthday. You ought to be celebrating this, the new birth, not the old birth. Because the old birth is in Adam. The new birth is in Christ. Take that to your church. Take that to, the, to your celebration. But Job speaks about doors. I'm going to try to be clean as I can be, but the birth canal. And Job says, as far as being born in the troubles and the agonies I am, I wish my mother's birth canal was closed. I wish I was dead on the other side. And Jeremiah will say the same thing. I wish I never came out this world. I wish I never saw light. I wish the, I wish the doctor never spanked me. I wish I was never to be. This would be an untimely birth. A death of a child. Again, in America, we see many, many children not coming to birth through the, through the doors. They're shut up because of a doctor and a needle and medication to abort the fetuses. 
that is a sin. But here Job says, I wish I was never born. Job 38, 8. Job 38, 8. Hope I was clean. Job 38, 8. Or who can sh who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as it had issued out of the womb? I almost. Now we're looking at the time of Noah's flood. God opened up them doors. God opened. Woohoo! Man, the earth was flooded. A worldwide flood. Or possibility letter B. When I go down to the beach here, Atlantic, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, Daytona Beach, the water can go only so far. At high tide, it reaches its high point, and with the moon full, it reach. There's a highest point set by God. And if Daytona Beach, where I live, or anywhere where you're going to live, at such a place, Louisiana, just had Hurricane Barry go through. God will allow them doors to open that water will go further than it should or has. And you've got flooding. And who controls the flooding? Who opens up that water for that waterway and say, okay, go a little further? God. God did it in Noah's time. And God does it now. Noah's, after Noah's flood, God says, I will not drown the whole entire world out with a flood. But that didn't mean that God will not have little floods and big floods. He won't have a worldwide flood. So when you have a tsunami years, years ago in Japan, when that water just came where it's never been before and the doors was opened up, that brought death and judgment. A complete opposite of Noah and his family and the animals. God protected Noah and anybody who had gone in that, that ark, which nobody did, and those, are, those animals from the judgment of God. God may open up floods of doors to cast upon judgment and floods. And, no, and Job said, oh, that, that birth canal would never been opened up. Well, he likens it here as a womb. Instead of life coming forth from a woman, man, just death. A woman whose waters break. Get the analogy here. Instead of life coming from, from death. And God controls those doors of the sea. Ecclesiastes 12, 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 4. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 is a great... If you want to apply the implication, but there is a, a app, there is an application to chapter 12 for someone aging, getting old, the elderly. And here would be, you know what old people do now? They fear. They're insecure. And they will make sure before they go to bed, as I do, they'll check the doors, make sure they're locked. They'll check the windows. We didn't do that one night. We didn't check, and then we found someone in our house in the middle of the night. That's 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 scary. That scares me now to make sure everything's checked. And with the elderly, is you know what you lose security. You don't have no more hope and faith. It's it's the, it's it's getting less in what the world, and you expect the world to do you more harm. That's what you learn in old age. It's not getting better and better. It's getting worse and worse. So again, here, the shutting of the doors would be, I want to be safe, I want to be secure, and I want to keep people, if I don't want you in, in here, you're not coming in. You don't belong here. So part, most of the time we've seen already, the shutting of the doors is safe. Peace. A rest. A time for rest. Shut the doors with your family. Getting together. Isaiah 26 20. Isaiah 26 20. Isaiah 26 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy door about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. There's trouble, there's problems, there's judgment coming. What do you do? 
Get in your house and shut those doors. Get in with God. Get in with Noah. Get in where God protects you. The world outside is in a turmoil and a mess. The best place is getting with your family. If your family's safe, where two or three are gathered together. If, if you do belong to a church and there's, there's saved people there, get inside with them and be in their comfort inside of a good Bible-believing, friendly, loving church where, you know what, outside the world, they don't care. They don't want to have anything to do with it. They hate you. But get inside with those and close the door and have sweet fellowship and get loving care of fellowship with those who are like faith and are saved with you. Man, there's nothing more to get in the world to get in the church where people love you and get inside close and just leave the world outside it's a great time to be with the Lord's people and inside I didn't say the church building I said inside the Lord's people you can be safe and secure with with the brethren two or three or more gathered together in the name of Jesus you can be safe out in the middle of a field out in the middle of a boat a word of the Lord will have you together in prayer. As Isaiah 26, 20, Matthew 6, 6. Matthew 6, 6. I'll tell you, it, it, I don't think this is here, but Matthew 6, 6. I'll tell you another, another thing for, you turn to Matthew 6, 6. Another thing for a good closed door I want to be clean, but the marriage bed. Between a husband and wife, no one can see, no one should enter, and you ought to have a rule in your household for your children. If that door of mom and dad's room is closed, you keep it closed and you can wait. Unless the house is on fire, unless the police need to be called, or you need medical attention, that door is closed, don't you knock. You don't need to knock, you wait till we come out. And then behind those closed doors, a husband and wife together. The marriage bed is honorable and all, and everything that goes on between that husband and wife is pure before God. Adam and Eve were naked, they were not ashamed. And I'm not just talking about sexual uh, you know, gratification. I'm talking about just hugging, loving each other, just being together. Or just resting and sleeping in peace together. Matthew 6, 6. But thou... When thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the, thy door, pray unto the Father which in secret. What's that? You got a place where you can go all alone to meet with God, and it doesn't have to have a door. There are people go outside. I know a man goes to a cemetery. He meets with God there and has a free belt. I mean, there's no door there. But figure, is there a place where, you know what? Dad's over there. That means he, he's reading or he's praying, leave him alone. Mom is over there, that means she's reading or she's praying, we'll deal with it unless it's an emergency. There will be a place where even your pastor doesn't know that where you go, you meet with the Lord and it's no, hey, look at me praying, it's Lord. I'd like to talk to you. I got my place, I got several places. Where you get off to be with the Lord. Shut the door and get with the Lord again. Is that not what... I guarantee no one in his family at times say, Lord, how long is this going to last? Lord, we've been in here for a while. Lord, hands getting a little sick over there. Lord, we need your help. Lord, did, oh man, we got... I don't know if there's any births or pregnancies on that shit, on that ark, but Lord, you know, the world couldn't hear them. They're, they're gone. I want that woman and her two sons with Joel. I want them to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, keep it going. Keep it. We, we got a few more, Lord. Keep it going. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, bless us. Help us. You know, she didn't have no idea what Elijah was going to have her do. This oil. He said oil, oil. He said, pour it out. We're pouring out. Lord, I don't know what it is, but we're doing it. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes getting behind closed doors by faith. Noah, by faith, got in that ark. That woman by faith got every pot she could get, every pan, and just poured out. Poured out. Matthew 25, 10 or 11. Matthew 25, 10 or 11. 
No, my right. Matthew 25, 10 or 11. Ten. This is the this is the virgins. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came. They went. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterwards came the ones that did not go through the door. And you got to realize, when God says, "Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved," you don't go through that door straight as a gate that leads into life. You don't go through that door. And when you die without Jesus Christ, that door is shut. You're not getting through. You're not going to meet Peter. You're not going to get into heaven by good wishes. You're not going to get into heaven by good intentions. You're not going to heaven by a Baptist. You're not going to heaven by being baptized. Once that door is shut to you by not receiving Jesus the way, the truth, and the life, you're not going to heaven through that door. Though New Jerusalem, every gate that's a pearl is open, it ain't open to you. And for the, the passage here in the tribulation period of a Jew and their works, if you don't have the necessariness of what is prescribed by the salvation of the tribulation period of works and faith and doing and the law, you come up short. When Jesus comes, you're not going to be riding with Jesus. You're going to be an enemy of Jesus. If you're not there, you're going to be one of the goat nations and cast out. So this door being shut is you did not adhere to what God told you to do in any dispensation. And once that door is shut and you disapprove, you did not do what God told you to do for salvation. It's closed. You can bang on that door all you want. Depart from me, work in iniquity. I never knew you. That's how holy God is. Luke eleven seven. Luke eleven seven. Luke eleven seven. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Look at that. You got something from God. You need something from God. You have a want for God. If your want is scripturally, if your want is rightfully, if your want and your need is holy before God, and it won't be abused, and it can be used by God, here comes that open door. Like the floods that will destroy mankind and destroy places on this earth, that door being opened by God can richly bless you and help you and give you comfort. And yet sometimes prayers could be God open up that door and say, okay, you can have it and it can destroy you too. There have been prayers answered by God to people and God's like, okay, fine, I'll give it to you. Well, it ain't going to be to my honor. It ain't going to be to my glory. It'll be to your destruction. Here you go. So when God opens the door, it could be great blessings, or when God opens up the door, it can be judgment. God opens up that door, and you go walking in, there could be leprosy in the walls, and you could be sick. You could open up that door, go in, ride out the storm. You can go in there, get the oil that you need. Go in, get the rest. Don't allow the world in. You can go in, get leprosy. You can go in and just have the doors closed to you and God. 1325. 1325. 1325. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut to the door, you begin to stand without to knock at the door. Say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer, saying to you, I know you not. Whence you are come. Again, deal with what we've read before with the virgins. Once you have died, 
and you have not gone to the doorway of hope of God. Today would be the straight gate. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. As a person today in the church age, if you don't come through the door of Jesus Christ and you die, you can knock on that door all you want. You're not getting in. The rapture will happen. You're not going. Now, whether you're before the church age in the works of the law or even before the law, like the time of Abraham or like the time of the tribulation when the laws are going to come back and works, if you've done everything that God has told you to do during that time, where or when you're going to live, then that doorway is open for you. But if that doorway is shut because you lied in rebellion and pride and against God in every way or even one way out of the will of God, that door will be shut to you. And you'll die by rebellion against God. And there'll be no hope. There'll be no hope. John 20. John 20, verse 19. John 20, verse 19. Then the same day, the evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, protection, came Jesus and stood in the midst, saying unto them, Peace be unto you. And that door did not stop Jesus. And in times of trouble, man, the Jews just killed Jesus. They may kill us also. Let's get in the upper room. Let's shut the doors. And they were together. As I've said before, there's nothing like sweet fellowship with, with other Christians of like faith and like belief. That are your brothers and sisters are the children of God in times of fear. That's exactly what the apostles are. And guess what? Two or three are gathered together. Literally, here comes Jesus Christ right through the door. That door is not going to stop him. Same chapter, verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with him. And then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst. Listen, the doors you shut for your prayer all. Your prayer altar, the doors you shut for trying to tribulation, the doors you shut to keep yourself safe, the, the, the times you keep your doors shut with your church family, the time you keep your, your church shut with your your family, the time you just get in that room and say, just for protection and peace, the door being shut is not going to stop Jesus from coming in. And he's not even going to open the door. Everybody in outside your world can say, well, who's he talking to? Who, who, who's in there with him? I don't know. Jesus is. Not only is Jesus in the boat, but he's in the room with you with the door shut. Now, isn't that sweet fellow? Acts 5.23. Acts 5.23. Problem is, when you're with Jesus in that room, the door is shut, that door has got to open up, doesn't it? And you got to get back out there in the world. <laughs> That's when it gets harsh. 5.23. Saying the prison truly found what we shut with all safety. And the keepers stand without before the door. But when they went open it, we found no man within. Peter's in, I believe this one's Peter. He's in jail. And they got the door shut. And they got the guards out there. They got the seals out there. And the door's got the safety. And the locks are, have been certified. They are closed. The bolt is closed. Now the, the, the disciples in the upper room, Jesus came to the doors. There was no trouble. There was no trouble for Peter to come through those doors. The, the angel of the Lord came to Peter. The doors opened up and he got out. Now I'm telling you, I'm going to take this, I'm going to spiritually apply to it. When death has come and we are locked up inside of a casket, locked up inside of a, of a, a concrete pad and locked up amongst six six feet of dirt, if not more. When we're locked up inside that, when the raptures happen, it's not going to stop. I think those doors are going to go wide open. I don't know if the dirt's going to go flying, but that would be a wonderful thing. You want to talk about a, 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 a zombie apocalypse? 
Yeah, there's a zombie apocalypse coming. When the Christians are coming out of graves, we're not coming for brains. We're not coming to torture. We're coming to go up to see Jesus. Amen. Death is not going to... Peter is on his deathbed. Peter is about to be killed like James was killed. Going up. Death is not going to stop us if we... If the rapture, if the Lord tarries, there's death, jail bonds, it's not going to stop. If you are put in jail because of the word of God, you are put in jail because of the service of Jesus Christ, that's not going to serve, that's not going to stop you from serving God and doing right. Build up a, build up a, a prison ministry. My son's done that. My son's locked up in, behind bars for a sin that he's done. He's confessed that sin. He's gotten right. And he has his own personal jail ministry. Amen to glory to God. That hasn't stopped him. That hasn't stopped him. Some people right away, oh, you can't do nothing because you're sin. Well, why don't you go acknowledge your sin and let God work with others? Because Moses murdered a man too. David was a sinner. Stephen was a sinner. Paul was a sinner. God can use sinners that repent. That's Acts chapter 5. Acts 21 30. Don't let nothing stop you from serving the Lord. Keep going. Keep going. Unless the Lord puts a door in front of you, keep going. Proverbs 21.30. Proverbs 21. We read in a place when we did the, 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 the preaching, the preach study. The Holy Spirit forbade them to preach in one area of, it, of Asia. God closes that door. Okay, Lord, just keep on going. Open another one. Show me what door you want me to open. Show me what door you're going to open. And there may be doors that God puts you in life. He shuts and, okay, let's go do something else, Lord. Uh, Acts 21.30. All the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and threw him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. Remember we read in, remember we read in Kings? They shut the temple up. They shut the temple up here. Why? Because they didn't want Paul in there. They did not want Jesus Christ in that temple. They didn't want to bring Jesus Christ where he rightly belonged in that temple. Listen, it was Jesus Christ that rent that, that veil that was in the temple between the most holy and the holy place. I wonder what they did with that veil. I never found out. They sold it back up. But, I mean, the only ones that know that was in there were to be the priests. And there may be people who will shut up their church because you're a Christian. And I've had that happen. I've been forced out of churches because I stand for the Bible and do what the Bible tells me to do. Baptist churches. I've had, oh, you got bumper stickers on your car. You know, move your car over there. Shut the door. You can't have that. He's, he's going to offend our visitors. That'll happen to you, too. Last place, Revelation 3.8. Revelation 3.8. I know thy works. Behold, I set before thee an open door. This is Philadelphia. That no man can shut it. This is the church of the Bible. This is the church of the great revival. This is the church of the, of the missionary that went out all over the world upon England where the sun never set upon the, uh, the English empire. This is where the Bible went out. This is where the Bible, the King James Bible has been printed. This is where missionaries are going out telling people about Jesus. God says, no man's going to shut that door. And they tried. What about the church of Laodiceans? Laodiceans chapter 3, verse 14 to 19. But let's look at, before we close, Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. What, what are you saying there? The lie of the seeing church age is closed to Jesus Christ. Your wonderful, great, marvelous church may have Jesus Christ standing outside going, anybody want to come out? Hello? Anybody in there want to get out? I know you think you're rich. I know you think you're great. I know you think you're wonderful, but you're mentioned risible pine, and you're just foolish. Anybody want to come out? And that door is to open the door of the church 
and say, I want to leave that church and I want to come out to Jesus and sup with Jesus. The church that was that had the open door, man couldn't shut the Philadelphia church age, wonderful, great. We are in the Laodicean church age where the church is shut doors to Jesus. Aren't we remarkable? Aren't we a great period? Aren't we just so wonderful? And Jesus is standing at that door, knocking. Noah went in, closed the door. That widow and her sons went in the door and closed it. And then you had the government close the, the physical church temple, uh, the physical Jewish temple. Then they closed the temple so the Christian couldn't get in. Now you got the church that has the closed doors to Jesus. That marks our church age. You're not a wonderful, great, wonderful doing church. You're poor, miserable, wretched, naked, and blind. And you may have Satan in the front row, amen, your preacher, your preacherette. I don't know. I'm not saying every church. But it's possible there are churches that have Ichabod. And Jesus will not go through. Jesus, when he was in the temple, kicked down all the tables, knocked all the animals out, built himself a cord, and just started whipping. In this church age, he, he got out, he closed the door, and said, anybody want to come out? Step out. Step out. That's a remarkable message about closed doors and shut doors. Our church age period is marked by doors are shut to Jesus Christ. 